I did. I actually texted them this morning before coming into the facilities, and they're all super excited. It's about a seven-hour drive. How, uh, I assume they're not going to drive, but uh, are they planning on coming? Um, yeah, it probably depends on um, you know how big of a group they're getting together. Um, I don't know. It might be cheaper to drive. You know, like five people per car. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're in the NFL now. You can probably afford it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. But um, no, I think it just depends on you know who's deciding to go. Um, I don't know if my grandma still likes flying or if she likes to drive. I don't know. Probably. I guess it. I guess it depends on all that. How many games were they able to come to last year? Um, only to one of the games. Um, uh, they were there for the Washington game, um, so I'm really excited for them to all come. Mm. And yeah, so last year was only my dad, but this year is really probably everyone. Did, did they get to see you play at Central Michigan? Um, no. So um, first two years, uh, they came in the off season, or like sp spring ball season, just because there was a little bit more free time. Um, and then they were like, oh, yeah, we're coming this year. And then COVID hit, obviously. And then you had to quarantine every time you wanted to travel somewhere. And then no one can take off five weeks to travel somewhere, obviously. So. Yeah. So that news this morning was huge. It was, yeah. I, I, I was pumped. Have you ever been to Frankfurt? Yes, I have. Um, How would you describe it? Um, old. <laughs> no, it's really nice downtown. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's a beautiful city. Um, I probably need to freshen up with some restaurants and stuff that are out there uh, to give the right recommendations. But no, it's, it's beautiful. and. I'm just looking forward to going out there. Bernard, where, where are you now as compared to where you were last year at this, at this moment in terms of preparation? Um, I mean, we've, had, we've been having a lot of fun in the off season. I mean, feel better physically, mentally. Um, you know, really take care of, of your body in the off season. You put on a couple pounds, you work on your technique, you, you build more chemistry with the guys, um, which has been huge. And yeah, you just get more comfortable with, with the other guys, but also with like playbooks, with the, the speed of the NFL and everything. And um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to the season now. I was going to ask you, did, did have, have you gained some weight? Yeah. How um, much? I mean, 15 pounds or so, but um, definitely trying to keep that up, um, but continuing working my footwork, trying to um, keep speed as, as good as possible. Um, and yeah, looking forward to, you know, then also, um, trend, so like using that extra weight on the field and, you know, really translating that on, on the football field. Do you still feel like yourself despite that? Oh, definitely. I feel better than ever. What was the single biggest thing you learned last year? You faced some great pass rushers, but what was the single greatest thing you learned? Um, the single greatest thing that I learned um, so I just that I can do it um, obviously it's not always the result that you want um, but like especially in a rookie season um, going up against rushers that you've watched on TV for such a long time um, that you know Akil Mack came from the same conference and you look, you look up to him and then you face him all of a sudden and like it kind of gets in your head um, but then you know more and more realizing that you, you got this and um, you can really hang in with those guys. Um, it's a it's a huge step forward. And then obviously you just then you just got to keep the focus throughout the whole game, um, not let it slip up in a couple plays, and keep improving every week. Like with Tony Perano so far, and just getting to know him, what has he I guess taught you so far, and what he see in you? Um, I'm yeah really excited uh, with Coach Perano. Um, he's a he's a great coach, great guy outside of the football building as well. And it's it's been a lot of fun getting to know him, getting to know kind of his philosophy and the way he teaches. You know, every coach has a little bit of a different style. Um, but, you know, he um, has a lot of, you know, little wrinkles in there uh, that he teaches us. And we've all been really enjoying him and we've gotten to learn a lot. How would you describe his style? Like, is he, is he I don't know, very vocal or is he very, like, detailed? Does he want you to redo something? Like, how would you? No, I mean, he's, he's not the type of guy that's just going to, um, you know, just yell at you across the field. 
uh, but he's going to take you aside and he's going to make sure you you do it as as many times as you need to until you get it right. Um, he's not, you know, um, letting you get away with anything, and he's going to make sure you you get it right and you understand it and you understand why that prep didn't work out for you or like why you did something wrong. And yeah, it's just great coach. Bernard, are you a guy when you self critique, look back at last year? Do you take more from the good that you did? Or the things that you want to improve on. Um. Obviously, you want to learn from both, but you, the the negatives are always going to stick in your head a little bit more. Is it hard to get past them? Or? Um. No, I wouldn't say that. It's just you're gonna, you know, it's it reminds like when you think about something, you you remember more of the, the negative things. And um, I've just always been, you know, type of a perfectionist, and you can have like whatever. 70 good snaps and then you get one or two bad ones in there but you're going to think about those the most the next day um, especially if then you don't win as a team um, so you just kind of get in your own head a little bit but um, that's also something you, you got to learn that it's a week-to-week -week league and you got to learn from these mistakes and then improve them but looking back at the, at the last season obviously you you kind of watch those those bad plays over and over again and um, just going to make sure they don't happen again. Were you able to move past them last year? Were you able to move past them last year or did they sort of not answer for longer than they should have? Um, well, I think it's definitely a, a tough thing to to move past, but um, I've also had some great guys in the locker room, you know, Quinn right next to me who is the first guy to, that picks me up right after. Um, and you just, you know, work through it together. You come in on a Monday and work on, on those mistakes and then you're just going to move on and that's I think that was something I learned throughout the season too. Was there a moment last year when you, oh sorry, go ahead, oh. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, sorry I was, just, there was a point last year when you uh, kind of settled in at least as far as starting every game at left tackle to kind of let you finish it out, how much did that just continuity, consistency of reps kind of help you develop? Um. For me, per, like I think for every offensive lineman, um, it's it's huge to get this you know continuous like um, game experience and just building the chemistry with uh, the guys, um, kind of you know getting the snap count down because obviously you know the snap count, but um, every quarterback is you know slightly different. Every snap, every center snaps the ball a bit sooner or later, um, so just just getting all that down. Makes you know it doesn't only get you more comfortable back there, but it also um, makes the job a lot easier because you you kind of know what everyone else is doing. On Pick, piggybacking off that, was there a a welcome to the NFL moment for you last year, and was there a moment when you felt like I got this, I belong here? Um, <laughs> kind of going back and thinking about the, the negative place more than the, the positives. But um, the Denver game obviously was like the welcome to the NFL moment of, um, you know, you're not exactly on snap count or you, you take the, the wrong first step or something and you're going to get beat. So um, that was definitely like that kind of wake up moment of this is a totally different, you know, level. Um, but I mean. And, and a good moment. Um, you know, then it's just kind of, it, it was kind of an up, ups and downs. Um, there were, there were some games where you feel more comfortable than others. Um, you know, New England game, like, wasn't the game I wanted to, but then the overall was a, was a better game. So you kind of like, oh, I got this. I just got to lock in and I got to, you know, correct a couple of things. Um, so yeah, it's kind of hard to point it down which, which ones, but then, you know, practice gets a little bit easier and then games kind of slow down too. You mentioned our last four game restrictions when you were at Central Michigan. Obviously, your dad was ill and made it out last year. Was your family able to come out at all for your high school games, or will this be the first time most of them have seen you play American football, period? Um, so, um, let me think. My, so my dad was here last year. Um, no one really saw a, a college football game live. Um, so last time they saw me, I was playing football for the Vienna Vikings. Um, so that was a, some time ago. Um, and yeah, that's probably, so most of my family was probably like, what, seven years ago now or something. Last time they saw me play some. They, I know they're excited. I'm really excited and 
just really looking forward to it. So when you were still a wide receiver? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure last last game they watched me play was like the um, Austrian National Championship. Caught a touchdown pass. Just make sure you throw it in there. <laughs> but um, no, I think that, yeah, that's that like the last game they ever saw. And then, but all of them have really done a, an amazing job of just trying to keep up with everything. And they were able to watch games online, um, you know, even though they're six hours ahead. Um, sometimes they stayed up in the middle of the night or they recorded like the TV copy and then watch it the next day and then called me, you know, a little bit after. So uh, it's just, I always felt that support, even with them being that far away. So you got to get James for the attack and eligible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might have to talk to him about that. Bob, last one. Here, real quick. How do you think the people of Germany and Austria and surrounding areas will embrace American football yet again in their country? Um, I mean, I know the, the sport itself is, is growing every year, and I know they're super excited. Um, I know, like, half of my family were signing up for game for um, Germany game last year, even though I wasn't even playing there, um, just because they, they love football. Um, I know for me personally, my first ever NFL game was in London. Um, uh, Steelers were playing the Vikings. I mean, it was, it was huge for myself. Um, really opened up my eyes to you know NFL football, and I think or I know that everyone is like super excited over there, and um, yeah, especially my family. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. So in Austria, it's, it's German. Yep. I speak German. Um, I'm right on like between 315 and 320. Um, trying to stay up there. <laughs>